the Age of Enlightenment. The 18th century saw the birth of the Enlightenment. Scientists and mathematicians laid the foundation of modern achievements in their fields. Philosophers proposed rational forms of government that were put into practice after American and French revolutions. Archaeologists and explorers probed past and distant civilizations for an understanding of the other cultures. Mechanics and engineers invented devices and machines that were to transform industry, commerce, and transportation. Historians began the first accurate chronology of world events, and with it came an understanding of the architectural accomplishments of the various Western civilizations, especially Greece and Rome. The Grand Tour was the traditional travel of Europe undertaken by mainly upper-class European young men of means. Began 1660 until the advent of large-scale rail transit in 1840s. It served as an educational rite of the primary value of the Grand Tour. It was believed lay in the exposure both to the cultural legacy of classical antiquity and the Renaissance and to the aristocratic and fashionably polite society of the European continent. In addition, it provided the only opportunity to view specific works of art and possibly the only chance to hear certain music. A grand tour could last from several months to several years. In essence, the grand tour was neither a scholar's pilgrimage nor a religious one. Since the 17th century, a tour to such places was also considered essential for budding young artists to understand proper painting and sculpture techniques. Classical architecture was also studied. Artists and architects traveled south in droves to swarm over the classical ruins, studying and measuring many published their findings. The result would be neoclassicism. Even broader changes were brought about by the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, dated around 1750. New materials, new technologies, and new system of construction would radically alter traditional building forms and would make completely new building types possible. The Neopelagians were among the first to undertake a thorough study and revival of architecture from the classical past. By the middle of the 18th century, the artistic elite of Europe had developed a renewed interest in building of antiquity. The 18th century interest in antiquity, however, differed in previous returns to Rome in both its focus and its breadth of impact. Remains of the Greek colonial town of Paestum, Roman cities of Herculaneum, and Pompeii were discovered. Thomas Major published The Ruins of Paestum in 1768 contributing measured examples of archaic Greek temples of the growing knowledge of Greek architecture. Gian Battista Piranesi came to Rome in 1740, where he supported himself by producing views of the city to be sold as souvenirs. Experimenting with the provocative evidence from the past, Piranesi gave architects a glimpse of architecture inherent possibilities. His works illuminates the two major and competing currents in 18th century art and architecture, Neoclassicism and Romanticism. Because they were inexpensive, produced in large quantities and easily transported, Piranesi engravings were widely distributed across Europe. Neoclassical buildings can be divided into three main types. Temple style, building features are designed based on an ancient temple. Palladian, building is based on Palladio style of villa construction and the classical block building. Temple style architecture exploded during the neoclassical age, thanks largely to wide familiarity with classical ruins. Many temple style buildings feature a peristyle, a continuous line of columns around the building, which is rarely found in Renaissance architecture. The English Neopalladians favored the simple approach to classicism found in the works of Andrea Palladio. Derived from the villas of Andrea Palladio, the greatest architect of the late Renaissance, Palladio's greatest successor emerged primarily in England. The most famous Palladian architect of the neoclassical period is Britain's Robert Adam, who designed many fine country houses. These mansions illustrate that while the Palladian architecture shares certain basic features, it takes diverse forms. Examples of Palladian architecture
the classical block, a building that features a vast rectangular or square plan with a flat or low-lying roof and an exterior rich in classical detail. The exterior is divided into multiple levels, each of which features a repeated classical pattern, often a series of arches and or columns. The overall impression of such a building is an enormous, classically decorated rectangular block. Two names are especially prominent in the fields of classical block buildings. The leading early practitioner was Henry LaRose, whose masterpiece is the Library of St. Genevieve. Here are some examples of the classical block. The most famous classical block of all is the Palace Garnier, a new Baroque opera house designed by Charles Garnier. The French Neoclassicists In France, the neoclassical movement developed somewhat differently than in England. French Enlightenment architects were interested in the primary geometric solids of the cube, sphere, and the pyramid as the logical basis for architectural expression an approach that paralleled the work of contemporary French philosophers who were exploring rationality as a basis for human affairs. The most inventive French neoclassicists were Etienne Louis Ballou and Claude Nicolas Ledoux, both of whom designed many hypothetical projects as well as real ones. His design for the Hotel de Telluson in Paris is a remarkable exercise in the manipulation of the three-dimensional space, both externally and internally. His composition for a newly developing residential section of Paris begins with a massive triumphal arch gateway sunken into the grounds as it were a half-buried monument in ancient Rome. In 1771-77, the architect, theorist, and teacher J. F. Blondel set forth his ideas about architecture in his course The Architecture. His writings explain in detail the essential elements of good architecture and the hierarchy of buildings, from common residents to those associated with the king. Here are some examples of French architecture.